My name is Teresa Barito, and Jonathan Luna and I were first cousins. He was a bright light. He was one of the most special people that I've ever known. I did not see him often, um, but whenever I did see him, um, it was always a, a good uh, reunion. Um, he was very positive, um, just a, a dynamic person. Describe him, uh, smart. Just yeah, smart, um, all about family. He uh, really liked to keep in touch with family. He came uh, down to visit my parents uh, early in 2001. Um, you know, just, just popped up to see them. Um, he would go see my sisters and uh, he, uh, he stayed in touch with family members. At, well, at his funeral, you know, someone mentioned the Luna effect. And I thought that was very accurate for him. Um, he did have a way with people. Um, I don't remember, I can't recall anybody ever saying anything negative about him. You know, any, nobody was ever disappointed in him, um, um, you know, ashamed of anything that he was doing. We were just proud of him. My youngest sister, um, her husband's father, died in August of 2001 and um, they were in the area for the funeral and I had invited them over to dinner it was a Saturday and um, just before they came she called to tell me that Joey was in town and he had his son with them and she wanted to know if they could bring him for dinner so I said sure we were in the living room I think we had had dinner by that time and we were just sitting there talking and out of the blue he said I hate my job. This is Jonathan. Yes, he said, I hate my job. And at the time, I, I didn't know where he was working. I thought he was with a corporate office somewhere, you know, doing some really dull work that wasn't challenging. Um, but it, it certainly stood out because we, I'm sure in the time that they were there, we talked about a lot of things. But I, I only remember, I remember that specifically. And, and it always comes back to me um, now, even though I didn't know where he was at the time, it was just the fact that he was unhappy, that he was at a point in his life where he was unhappy and dissatisfied and it bothered him enough that he would just come out and say it. You know? And this was, you said, about August 2001. Yes. He was sitting on my right on the sofa. And, uh, you know, when he said it, it really, it impressed me. I mean, it wasn't something that I would just shrug off. See, I don't remember what he said to encourage my brother-in-law at that time. And I don't remember. I know we talked about the dinner that I made and we talked about some other things. But the only thing that I, I really remember him saying to me was that he hated his job. And it, it sounded like he was, you know, he was having a moment where he just had to confide this. You know, I mean, he, you know. He said that to the three of us, um, but it did seem to come just from, you know, out of the blue. I can't recall us talking about our jobs. Well, did he seem day. down when he said that? Or? Um, I felt that way. I mean, even now my, my, my emotional response is the same. I felt bad for him. I felt, uh, I felt the discouragement at the time. I felt that he was, I felt, I thought he was stressed. He was probably under stress. And, uh, you know, I don't know if I should say depressed because I don't really know how deeply it was bothering him. But I know that um, when he said it, you know, it has it's been the one thing that he said to me that I have not forgotten. And, and my impression at that time was that he was unhappy, that he was just in a, you know, in a situation that he wanted to be out of. But it sounded as if, well, I, I hate it, but I'm, I'm in it. You know, I, he didn't say, I'm, I'm going to get out of it. Um, he just said he hated it. It's almost like he's trapped or something. Yeah, yeah. We had, um, we, we had a good time for the time that uh, we were together. He had his son with him. His son was very quiet, you know, and shy. Um, so I think that it seemed to me that he was looking for some relief by taking the trip. It could have just been a trip that he just made, 
you know, he didn't really plan it, but he just up and did it kind of like on impulse. I mean, we didn't, you know, we didn't know he was coming. It was just him and his son. And they were just kind of like on the road. Yeah, he was sitting, I still see him. He was, he was uh, sitting on my right. And uh, he probably had his son in his lap. And uh, he just, he said, I hate my job. Did you realize he was, and you said you didn't realize he was working for the Justice Department? No, then. I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that. Um, now, looking back and reading some things from the book, I realize now that, you know, he was in that situation. Because I hadn't seen him in a while, I didn't know. I think the last I had heard, he was with that other office. So I didn't realize he was a prosecutor at that time. And see, he, you know, he didn't talk about that. Um, he was just visiting and um but i think probably but i think now looking back that it must have been weighing heavily on him you know for him to make that statement especially since it wasn't as, as if any of us talked a lot you know so we weren't in the habit of talking to each other and sharing things and that just came out of him you know so you were saying the last time you saw him was your mother's funeral a few months before Jonathan's death. Yes, yes. That was July of 2003. And uh, he was already at my parents' house when I got there. And as soon as I walked in, he had his baby son, he had his youngest son in his arms. And that's the first thing he did was hand me the baby, you know. And uh, then he took pictures. He wanted to take pictures of, of family members because a lot of the of a lot of our family on on our parents side were there a lot of the uncles and aunts and um, that was what he was doing the picture uh, kept growing because it would it started with maybe five or six brothers and sisters and then they would send for another one who was outside or maybe another one was in another part of the house or whatever so um, through it all he was there taking pictures of the family so I had, was taking a picture of my aunt and I happened to have gotten a picture of him uh, in the background back there in the driveway. And that's my Aunt Emma who is married to my Uncle John. Um, and there in the background? There, yeah. I, I guess I was taking that picture of Aunt Emma, but, but there in the background back there is Joey. And I'm sure, he, I don't know who he was talking to. That might have been their van. I'm sure he was carrying a lot with him at that point, but he wasn't revealing anything. So he seemed fine. But, he didn't seem... Mm -mm. Did you ever know him to be a depressive or depressed? Or? Uh, no, I didn't. He was always very up. Um, when we met him, we met Jonathan and Angela at a, um, an anniversary party for my uncle and aunt. And um, that was the first time I met Angela. Uh, she was a sweet young lady. He was, he, his father was with him. And we had a lot of fun at the table. You know, I remember that. Um, that's you me and, and Uncle Paul. Yeah, that was before we left to go to the... So that's Jonathan's you know, dad. That's his father. Yeah. They, you know, he, he always took his father around. They, his father, um, I remember Joey and his father teasing me and uh, my sister because we were teasing each other. So we had fun. And then uh, prior to that, I saw him at a family reunion, a family reunion in um, Spartanburg, South Carolina. And see, that's what I'm saying. It was, family was important to him. You know, he had made a point of, of coming and bringing his father. You know, he has had a lot of energy, uh, very positive aura. I didn't realize he ran. I didn't realize that he was, you know, really into uh, running and, and, you know, taking care of himself. But, but he definitely always seemed um, on top of it and, um, you know, um, bright and, and, and focused. The point is when he tells you in, in 2001, I really hate my job and he seemed down, that that was unusual for him. I think so. See, it, that's why it, it stands out. It stood out even though I just figured, okay, he's in some dull corporate office. I, it stood out because that wasn't, it wasn't like him um, 
to be negative about anything. Um, and this was a job. And of course, when you think about a job, you think about your livelihood and you're saying, I hate it. Well, I took that very seriously. I know what that means for me when I hate a job. I hate it. I wish I weren't here. I, you know, I'm stuck here, but I really am trying to find, I will find a way to get away. And I remember thinking that for him in the back of my mind that, well, I hope he gets out of that. You know, I hope he's able to, you know, and I, I expected that he would. We all loved him and you didn't have to be with him. You know, for me, um, even though there weren't that many occasions when we were together, when we were, um, that was my cousin. And it had so much to do with him reaching out. Um, you know, he made a point of being with family. You know, like I said, he came down from Richmond that time, um, you know, to see my parents and, you know, to hopefully see me or my sister. And it just so happened, my sisters, it just so happened that um, my youngest sister who lives in Northern Virginia just, you know, was there. Unfortunately, you know, it was a sad occasion, but she was there. So um, when she called and said, you know, Joey's here with his son, you know, can we bring him over for dinner? Yeah, I was glad. You but know? the point is, here's somebody that family obviously means a lot. Absolutely. Absolutely. Family did. And I mean, if you, I mean, even though it was a sad occasion, um, you know, my mother passing away, but the thing was, there were so many people there that, you know, shared blood with Joey that were family to Joey, his family members. And so he wanted to capture that time, you know, I mean, it was a sad time, but then, you know, funerals are often reunions as well. And there they were all gathered like that in, in the living room. So I realize now when I look at my picture of them, you know, he was right in front of me taking the same picture. There are so many of us that lost him. It's not just me. You know, there are a lot of first cousins, uncles and aunts, um, well, people that loved him, you know. It's, you know, it just seems like his parents are devastated. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm sure they are. I mean, because he, he, he really looked out for them. You know, he took care of them. He moved them from the Bronx to, to Baltimore. Um, he was, uh, you know, he, he was, his father really relied on him um, to get around and he enjoyed traveling, you know, with Joey. So. Um, well, you were saying your your former husband was from Brooklyn, and Jonathan said to him once. Yeah, at the funeral, um, when I introduced them, um, the and funeral, I said Patrick's the funeral at my mother's mother. funeral, yes. I uh, introduced him to my husband, and uh, I said he's from Brooklyn, and he was, at that time, he was adjusting his camera or whatever, and he said, well, you know, he said something like, well, we're from the Bronx or whatever he said, but, you know, we're not there now. You know, we're out of there now. And um, so I know that that was a good thing he did. He did a very, you know, wonderful thing for his parents. You know, he moved them and his, and his brother and they were close to him. So he was always about his family. You know, he had, in my opinion, he had a big heart. It was devastating when my cousin called me to tell me it was just so hard to believe that he was gone and that he had, you know, been murdered. It was just hard to to believe that that was real. It just didn't seem real. Um, and even now, sometimes it just does not seem real, you know, that that he's not here. If you could, uh, you obviously would like the murder to be solved. Yes, I would. I would. Um, I mean, it was an awful thing. It was a vicious thing to take a father from his sons and, you know, take a man from his wife and his family. And I really know, I really believe that what happened um, is, I think it's a very big situation. Um, and I think he was caught up. Um, I think he was a victim. And um, it's just very tragic. 
And to think that when he was at my house, he was speaking about this situation that he was in that was heavy and it, it just got worse. And we didn't know what he was going through at that point in time. We just didn't know how much he was carrying. And I don't know if he could talk about it to anybody, you know, and um, at the funeral, of course, he never said anything. I didn't have a conversation with him at that point, but it was there then. And um, I mean, if you had seen him there at the funeral, you know, with the family, um, and we didn't get a chance to embrace him or say anything to him, and we just did not know that we would never get another chance um, to talk to him or anything and that he would be um, taken away from us and that he would be alone, you know, um, when he left this world. That's what really hurts my heart to think that he was alone.